Well, Ipswich Town have been the late goal kings this season, but ho ho, they don't like it when the tables are turned on them. Uh, how are you, Ian? Yeah, just like when the man puts up the board and says eight minutes extra time, he lies. He <laughs> lies. It was ten. Oh yeah, John. Yeah, you're right. We don't like it, but now we feel how like Rotherham felt the other week or Bristol City. So yeah, it's it's a killer. Kicks you in the teeth, but say la vie. All right, welcome back to the Ipswich U. First of all, thank you to all the subscribers we had from Ipswich last week. Uh, helped us massively get to our target. So massive kudos uh, to town fans. And this channel is well behind you in your promotion push. So, OK, a little blip. Um, Leicester have had them. Leeds aren't having them, uh, which is a little bit scary. But yeah. um, how did you rate the overall performance at, at the Cardiff City Stadium? Actually, you know, it was it's weird. When we played Cardiff at Portland Road, they played us like they were the home team. They were aggressive. They came at this. They took a 2-0 lead. When we go and play them in Wales, totally different. It was like they were on the road. They were defending with five, six, seven people. They were so hard to break down. And it was it was getting frustrating. And it and it wasn't until Keith and Moore scored in the 70th minute that I thought, at last, we've managed to break them down. And you know, deep into injury time, we're thinking, okay, we've 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 got the points we need. It wasn't the prettiest of games, but um all credit to you know, some of the Cardiff players, you never say never. Um, I'd be interested in how many of the Cardiff fans actually missed both those goals because <laughs> there was a fair few leaving at 90 minutes, I can tell you. Okay. But yeah, it, it was a di it was a very difficult game. Um, Cardiff did their best to disrupt our style of play and yeah, we had to have a couple of changes and uh, it is what it is. We, we carry on. Fortunate some of the other results went our way. But. Yeah. All right. Well, as I say, welcome back to the Ipswich View. We're going to talk um, all things refereeing decisions this week and whether town fans would have welcomed VAR in the, in the championship this year. We're also going to be welcomed by uh, Andrew, who's our Sheffield Wednesday fan and looking ahead to Wednesday's visit to Portman Road this weekend, just before the international uh, break. Um, I'm also going to see review. Um, um, where uh, where Ian thinks it's are going to finish. Let's start with that one then. Um, your fixtures um, are um, are kinder than uh, than Leeds. They are kinder than Leicester's. So are we now in the match day talk of nine cup finals to go, one game at a time. If you win every game, you're going up. It's it's interesting. We've got two difficult games together: you know, Norwich away, Southampton at home. I, you know, I just don't know about those. I just foresee that that Leeds Southampton game really is going to be pivotal. The last game of the season. The way I'm looking at it right now is Leeds are going to be second, Ipswich are third, Southampton fourth. Whoever wins out of Leeds Southampton will get that second place. And I'm going to predict that there'll be a draw at Ellen Road and Ipswich will win and we will get the second because that's what Sky have told us they want. So, you know, we have to deliver. I mean, yeah, it's all to play for now. I would, I wouldn't like to predict those final places. Yeah, I think Leicester had a few blips. Leeds are in phenomenal form, but there are some uh, dark horses still yet to kind of give their final position out there as well. Okay, let's let's have a look at the fixtures for a second. Yeah, so your your home fixtures then: um, Southampton, Watford, Middlesbrough, and Huddersfield. Um, yeah. Yeah, on, on on paper, three out of four of those are are, are wins, aren't they? Um, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, it's that Norwich fixture, isn't it? That that awful yeah. trip to Carrow Road. Yeah, the, all bets <laughs> off for the derby. I, I I wouldn't like to predict that either way. And and you know, I'm looking at Blackburn. You know, we prone to an early goal. Stanley Smodic is just unstoppable right now. Yeah, you know, it could be a game that makes a hell of a difference as well. Um, yeah. And then I look at other games now, you're like the likes of Coventry, who'll be really fighting for that sixth place. Huddersfield fighting to keep up, Hull fighting for the sixth place. You know, although on paper it might look like it's an easy run in, at the moment, you know, possibly Middlesbrough and Watford are the only two teams with nothing to play for. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's but good. you'd like to think that Coventry or Hull, that will all be sorted by by then. And, of course, Huddersfield will hopefully be sorted by then as well. Um, and, of course, the team that you're playing this weekend are definitely going to hope that that's all sorted. That's Sheffield Wednesday. Um, before we get our Wednesday fan in, let's talk to you about refereeing decisions. Um, there's been a number, Ian, over the last recent weeks in the Championship, which have called into question whether it's time to bring VAR into the championship. Um, 
first of all, what's your view on that? And also, what key decision do you think has massively cost Ipswich this year? It's difficult with VAR because, you know, it, if we bring it into the championship, do we then start saying at League One, well, we should have it at League One? At some point, you have to put a line in the sand. I personally, for example, while VAR is purely in the, in the Premier League, I don't think it should be in the FA Cup because it's not in FA Cup fixtures played in non VAR grounds. And that seems a bit strange. It's like we either do it or we don't. So at the moment, we've captured it for Premier League and for Premier teams playing at home in the Cup. There have been occasions where you might potentially bring VAR. But if you speak to the likes of Leeds, Southampton, Leicester fans, I think one of, one of the points they always bring out about enjoying being in the Championship is it's not so much they haven't got VAR, but it's fluid run of the game. You know, the, the game, you score a goal, you can celebrate. Whereas in the Premier League, you score a goal, you're like, am I celebrating? I don't know. Hang on. We'll sit and wait. You know, three minutes later, oh, it is a goal. And it, it loses momentum there, I think. And it's a whole different dynamic. So you know, it's interesting. You know, I think we just have to put the emphasis on actually drilling in to the officials and holding them to account, not so much for the odd bad decision here, but just for driving consistency, you know, consistency in referees applying the correct amount of stoppage time, consistencies in pulling up players for a certain type of foul. I mean, at the start of the season, we saw stupid amounts of extra time being played, and then they they calmed it down again. And now it's creeped back up again, but it's still not consistent. And that's what every fan wants, you know. If, if you're going to pull a player up for doing that, then you've got to pull up the other player. Um, a classic example last week was um, the team of time-wasting, phenomenal time-wasting. And the referee stopped the game, went over and spoke to the, to the guy who was time-wasting uh, for about two minutes, but didn't book him. And I thought, well, you just added another two minutes. And I guarantee, I guarantee that time will not be added onto the game. So, you know, the game isn't about you as a referee. You're here to ensure the laws of the game are adhered to that is it and once we can get referees realizing that they we haven't paid to see them then maybe we can maybe we can keep everybody happy so for me it's all about consistency okay all right yeah we did actually speak to Leeds and Leicester from the, earlier on uh, on for their preview and both said actually we much enjoyed this football in the championships you are obviously spot on uh, all right let's bring in our resident owl uh Andrew then uh to preview this uh this trip to his or his trip to, to Portman Road. Good evening, Andrew. How are you? Good evening. Well, I'm okay. Mixed mixed feelings after last week, but then again, a win and a defeat are better than two draws by one point. <laughs> by one point. Um, Andrew uh, Ipswich, obviously, are old friends of yours uh, from uh, from League One last year. What do you remember about your battles uh, last year? I remember Connor Chaplin will re remember uh, the uh, the meeting at Portman Road last year because he uh, he missed a penalty I think if I remember, yeah, remember rightly. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about the battles of uh, League One? Well, obviously it was it was nip and tuck with them. They were they were lucky that we faltered. They were playing us when we were faltering, and and that is when you know, we we went from a great position of being clearly you know firm favourites to win the league even at one stage to then sort of struggling to sort of make the playoffs, which is ridiculous really. Where they 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 hit a purple patch after our purple patch had come to to a halt. So it was just timing, really, you know, at the end of the day. So we now, you know, this season, this is crucial for us. And, and Ipswich, obviously, are up there. They're, they're fancying their chances. And this is absolutely crucial that we have now got to bounce back. We can't really want to, we're not going to want to lose two games on the trot. You know, I know Ipswich are just as strong as Leeds near that top. But we, they're, they're obviously going to be hurting after losing the way they lost to Cardiff. And we are hurting for losing to Leeds. So we are now ready to have a go at Ipswich. And it's going to be a much different team to the team that played them at Hillsborough in the scene in September. There'll probably be only two players who played in that game who may be even considered for this game this Saturday. And I'm I, I'm not giving up the ghost because just the one defeat. You know, we both lost. They lost two. So we're both going to want to bounce back. So we're ready for this. I noticed he didn't mention Wednesday's being a hard game coming up for him. He's mentioned Southampton <laughs> and Norwich. Well, be ready for a battle this Saturday, I can assure you. Let me know walk in the park for Ipswich Town. Uh, Andrew, Sheffield Wednesday haven't scored against a top half side uh, since uh, the start of December. So, what gives you the confidence that um, you can walk into Portman Road and and you know well, score a goal, let, let alone beat them? You say that, but you know our away form hasn't been bad recently. We've got results. We had the win, and um, we have been scoring away. Okay, okay, you say top half side. 
Yeah, um, we could have scored against Leeds quite easily. That goalkeeper made a great, a great save to stop us going one nil ahead. Gasama could have put us ahead in that game. It could have been a whole different ball game there. And also, it was frustrating that that four minutes of injury time was up before they got that goal. Bamford scored. If we'd have gone there half time nil nil, could have been a different story altogether. But that's another story. But you know, I, I we've got the, the ammunition to do it now. These guys are capable of scoring goals. Okay, Ugbo didn't look like scoring on Saturday. It wasn't his day, but you know, he he knows he can score. He'll have a go. And the other good news, hopefully, is that Paveda will be back. We, we missed him against Leeds. He's dangerous. We, he's dangerous going forward. So we've got the ammunition that can hurt them. Bannon's still pulling the strings in midfield. He had a great first half against Leeds on Saturday. You know, he's still running the show yeah. there. So we've got the ammunition. Ipswich Town, if they think they're playing a team that's sort of a small fry and uh, are out of it, you a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you look at the form table last six games, this is second versus fifth. Uh, in the form league, uh, Ian, um, would you like to see Sheffield Wednesday survive this season? Do you know, it's weird. I watched the Sheffield Wednesday Leeds game last Friday, and at first half, I thought Sheffield Wednesday played really, really well. And I, I only think the reason why they lost is because Leeds literally scored with the death of the first half, and they just went into that change room and came out deflated. And that was a shame, really, because I would have think I would have rather seen Sheffield Wednesday beat Leeds. But, but as for staying up, yeah, I think Rolls done a really good. Um, he's done a good job over the last few weeks. It's taken a bit of time. I think the whole Darren Moore saga has hung over their heads. The fans not being happy with the chairman has hung over their heads. There's, lots, there's lots of reasons to point for their failings this season. But, you know, I, we don't underestimate them. And I will also add that of all the fans we've had at Portman Road, uh, I think Coventry have been the loudest and the best so far. And I'm pretty sure... Sheffield Wednesday will eclipse that because they always travel in numbers. Yes. Um, we'll but there. it's worth noting that this time last year we played them and um, I think Sheffield Wednesday were top of the table when we played them uh, and we drew, which took them off the top of the table. And we were about, I think we were six points below Sheffield Wednesday even after that. So what it does show, even at this point in the season, you know, either Ipswich or Sheffield Wednesday, yeah, we could fall totally out of the playoffs or we could end up winning this. And again, for Sheffield Wednesday, they could, they could have a poor poor run of form and be dragged back in. But I, I think I think they'll pull away. I think Barry Bannon will be getting amongst his players now and they start to see a bit of daylight. And it, it'd, be, it'd be good for at least one Yorkshire team other than Leeds to stay in the Championship, I guess, because it looks like the rest are going south. You missed the main reason for our demise this season. It begins with the letter X and ends with the letter O. <laughs> Cisco. He's the main reason. Absolutely disastrous start this season. What, what an achievement Danny Roll has done to bring us back from the dead, literally. Uh, Andrew, after this weekend, of course, would you and Wednesday fans uh, want to see Ipswich go up? Well, I like Ipswich. I've always liked Ipswich in the past. You know, a sort of small East Anglian club, you know, no disrespect, but, you know, they're, they're not a giant. You know, it, please, you know, they're not like Sheffield Wednesday historically, but Ipswich Town have, have done well. I'd still, I, I certainly think they're, they're, they've sort of been more successful, more famous than Norwich. Um, would I, I, prefer, I prefer Ipswich to go up than Leeds. I don't want Leeds up at all. Of course not. We want Leeds with us next season. We okay. want all. We want Leeds, Sheffield United, and us having a happy party next season. All three of us. <laughs> okay, let's get some score predictions then. Ian, you can have first. You're at home. Um, Ipswich against Sheffield Wednesday, last game before the international break. Yeah, we we need we need to get three points. Uh, I'm going to go for home win uh, again. I still can't justify a, calling a, a clean sheet. So it's going to have to be two one home win for Ipswich. Okay. Andrew. Well, <laughs> I'm going to gamble that we are going to get a surprise win there. I'm going to gamble on a 2-1 away win, but I'll take a draw. I will definitely take a draw. We've got Swansea at home the week after that or next game after that and hoping that we win that one. So I'll take a draw, but I'll write down 2-1 win. So just in case we do surprise, just All in right. case we cash in on their bad luck at Cardiff. All right. Nice one. Enjoy the game. Thank you very much, both of you. Cheers.